Okay, uh, hi everyone and welcome. I'm Adam Berezin from MS Dynamics World and I want to thank everybody for joining us for today's session, um, which will focus on freight management for Dynamics NAV made easy using Dynamics TMS, um, which will be presented by John Risky and Ari Smith from Next Generation Logistics. Uh, we're very happy to have both of them here with us today. Um, so before we get started, I'd like to quickly mention that you could submit any questions you have during the session through the Q&A box on the right side of your screen. Um, John and, and Ari will try to get to them uh, at the end of the event. Um, so without further delay, please allow me to welcome our first presenter, John Risky. Adam, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate this opportunity to uh, share with everybody on today's presentation, Dynamics TMS Transportation Management for NAV. Alongside me, I have Ari Smith. and. So just to kind of set the stage here, we'll do a short brief PowerPoint and then we'll kind of get into the throes of the dynamic CMS application and I'll kind of wear a couple different hats as we get into the software. I'll put my uh, user hat on from a logistics person. I'll talk a little bit about the sales order concept of the customer service and then ultimately the financial side uh, of paying uh, a freight invoice. So, so why don't we get started? We'll go ahead and... Um, Get into the PowerPoint here. Dynamics CMS Transportation Management Solution, freight management made easy for Dynamics NAV using Dynamics TMS. I'd like to introduce everyone to Next Generation Logistics. We've been in business for over 28 years. We have uh, three different offerings to our business model. We provide managed freight services uh, where companies outsource their freight and transportation to Next Generation Logistics. And we leverage the same technology that you'll see today to execute those uh, responsibilities in, in providing the logistics ex expertise and the logistics technology for perhaps shippers that don't have that internal expertise and, and prefer to outsource that. So that's a function we serve. We also provide supply chain consulting services. Companies hire us to do distribution network optimization, identify the various uh, distribution models that they, they run in and optimize the number of DCs or warehouse locations that they have and, and the whole concept is to reduce their footprint and, and save money and, and increase service levels. So we have the capabilities of providing services as such. And last but not least, we are a Microsoft ISV partner and we provide the Dynamics TMS Transportation Management Solution for NAV and actually the entire Dynamics ERP platform. So dynamic TMS transportation management for NAV, I realize that there's some other solutions in the marketplace, but I think our value that we bring to the marketplace in the NAV community, if you will, is that we pick up where a lot of the other systems leave off, and, and that is typically in the areas of less than truckload shipping, truckload shipping, multi-mode shipping, international shipping, and so uh, hopefully you'll see some of that today and uh, make that resonate with you in terms of where we pick up and how we extend the capabilities that are not within NAV today. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the real-time integration and touch points with uh, Dynamics TMS and NAV. And uh, again, we provide complete visibility of all order types, sales orders, purchase orders, transfer orders, and provide automated workflows so that the logistics folks can manage their day-to-day -day work activities and execute as needed. Uh, from a financial standpoint, we do provide the visibility for the finance team and uh, accounting, if you will, with freight accrual generation and tracking all the freight costs uh, seamlessly within the Dynamics NAV product. Um, technically, we do leverage design patterns in terms of our connectivity with Dynamics NAV. It's, um, it's the latest and greatest concept, if you will, uh, that I'm sure some of you are all aware of and uh, making it easier for add-on solutions to connect and interact with Dynamics NAV. It minimizes the need for customizations and allows for easy upgrade to future releases as Microsoft releases uh, the various versions uh, on a regular basis. At the end of the day, we feel that it protects your ERV, ERP investment uh, with the Dynamics TMS solution. Some of the problems that we'll talk about today and, and how Dynamics TMS uh, solve these problems, again, shippers have issues with the visibility and access to the information in a real-time format. And so uh, determining the least cost carrier, uh, the comparison between cost and service, best service, 
making those types of decisions, what type of mode do we need to ship our product in, and, oh, by the way, who's the right carrier provider that we need to select. So dynamic CMS certainly answers all those questions and give you uh, the power to make those types of decisions, leverage your freight volume, and uh, there's a lot of dynamics going on, no pun intended, here in the marketplace today as it relates to freight and transportation. Spot rates are real big, and so dynamic CMS enables you to uh, manage a a strategic uh, uh, process of uh, managing spot rates within the TMS system and, and controlling your freight spend. Uh, it improves the visibility of not only just outbound shipments, but you have inbound, whether it's domestic inbound, international inbound imports. And so uh, we give you the visibility in solving that uh, uh, problem of, of not having the, the visual tools to control your freight and transportation spend there. Uh, accurate and real-time communications with carriers. We interact with carriers a couple different ways. We don't necessarily, uh, you know, allow or like customers going to various different carrier websites. And so we provide tools to improve those communications between carrier providers and the shipper and um, <clears throat> leveraging a couple different technologies for that. Freight cost allocation, a lot of shippers find themselves having to do uh, the allocation methodology at a later point in time. Well, the TMS uh, already does some of that allocation by default, and it provides benchmark benchmarking tools for uh, the sales team and the analysts that uh, want to get in and slice and dice that information. The freight accrual generation, giving that picture to the finance team um, ahead of time rather than, you know, being more reactive, and it helps close out periods and things of that nature by having that information. Uh, rate shopping today may be done in various different websites that shippers find themselves in and going to two, two or three or four different web websites to get a, uh, a rate shopping. Well, now we have a single platform uh, that enables users to rate shop internally, externally, and get a big picture of all their carrier providers uh, in a single platform, um, as is with our track and trace component. Uh, it's a single platform that enables customer service, the visibility of tracking status of orders uh, from a logistics standpoint, transit, transit times and things of that nature, and delivery confirmation for the customer service, the sales folks, and even the warehouse. And um, then obviously reporting capabilities. Uh, we have a whole host of standard reports and custom reports that are unique to each individual shipper. And uh, we do leverage secret reporting services for a lot of our reports. Um, at the end of the day, we minimize the need for customizations in delivering uh, tools and features and functionalities around shippers and helping them manage their logistics requirements uh, seamlessly working with NAV, and therefore it doesn't require a lot of uh, customizations. Why buy it when you have some? Why customize it when you have something directly out of the box that can produce a good heavy percentage of the, request, the, the logistics requirements of day-to-day -day shippers? And obviously, quickly migrate to next release with, uh, without custom coding, and, and that's the value that dynamic CMS brings. So this might be a bit of an eye chart, but I wanted to kind of just set the stage here because TMS, transportation management, typically sits between order processing and the warehouse, right? And so this is just a flow chart, and, and every shipper has a different way of setting up their configuration with NAV, uh, whether you have a warehouse component or not. Um, but this is just at a high level to kind of give you an idea. When orders are released from uh, NAV, whether it's a sales order TO or PO, uh, they're directly released to the traffic group. And so the logistics folks have immediate visibility, even if that lead time is a two- or three-week lead time, but allows traffic to get some forward momentum in and, and looking at opportunities to reduce costs and, and do some additional logistics planning. Uh, where loads are tendered and communicated with carriers upon acceptance of that information with the carrier, uh, we do have a capability, again, depending on your configuration and what other elements or components you're working with, whether it's a WMS or not, we do have a pick list uh, sheet that you can pick and or produce bill ladings. But the idea here is that we can send that information to a WMS system if you're working with WMS or just work within the TMS uh, component. So we have, at the point in time, carrier confirms that load. It's released to the warehouse for picking. Uh, we do get a ship confirmation uh, so that the source of truth here is always NAV and updating the TMS. We do recalculate those costs so that uh, those costs are all in sync. 
Um, we do have a delivery confirmation that we'll receive from a carrier, and that happens a couple different ways. The traditional way is an EDI uh, status update, a web portal update that we'll talk about today, giving carriers access to updating you uh, with delivery confirmations using a web portal, and or a user can go in and actually enter in a delivery confirmation. So carriers that not, don't leverage the EDI component uh, have the ability, as I mentioned, to enter their freight bills online. It goes through an audit process. If it passes the audit, uh, it reverses the accrual. And now it sets up that transaction for payment. And um, essentially, once that uh, check has been cut and paid in, in now, that information all flows back into TMS, giving that information visual, if you will, to the logistics group in case they're having a conversation with the, the carrier or whatever, hey, did you pay me on this invoice, so on and so forth. So uh, it kind of closes that entire order to cash process, that loop. Again, depending on your configuration and that setup, um, we can accommodate uh, various different configurations, but uh, each and every shipper has a different way of configuring their business. So I just wanted to highlight the, the kind of set the stage here, if you will, for our standard flow in terms of our discussion today. So we'll go ahead and, and uh, get into the, the application now. And so just to kind of <clears throat> highlight what we're, the, kind of the process here, I'm going to give you an overview uh, of a couple different uh, pieces of the software here, identifying the setup, if you will, um, some other pieces of information uh, that are pertinent to the transportation setup process, and then I'll kind of get into the execution side and how we interact with, with NAB. So the Dynamics TMS system here has an alert capabilities and alert tools that uh, are transportation alerts uh, specifically. Um, we have some metrics and, uh, if you will, we have uh, risk management procedures in the TMS system that uh, users can subscribe to to get notified whether or not the carrier's insurance has expired and things of that nature. And these are a combination of email alerts as well as pop-up alerts on the TMS system. And so as we move into the application here, uh, again, you may be a single warehouse shipper or you may have multiple locations that you are responsible for shipping product out. It may be a product, I'm sorry, it may be a warehouse that you don't own, a third-party storage location. So really we give you that visibility of managing your freight from multiple warehouses uh, within the TMS system here. And this is really more no more than just a placeholder for all your warehouse information, contact, email addresses. And a real big takeaway from this screen here that I want to kind of point to your direct, uh, up in the ribbon bar here, point out here is our tolerances. A big piece of a transportation management system is not only having accurate freight costing components within the TMS, but secondarily to that is now the auditing aspect because a lot of shippers have our transaction intent and in being able to touch every piece of paper, whether it's 200 to 500 or 1,000 transactions on a monthly basis, it's, it's a lot of overhead. And so within the TMS system, we do have a mechanism here for our shippers to apply a audit tolerance uh, on a percent high and low and a dollar amount high and low. So as I said, the goal here is to get our expected freight costs using our tariff engine and, and the rates that we have loaded in the system to come up with our expected freight costs. Provided that we set up all that correctly, when the freight invoice comes in, one of many ways, either through EDI or through the manual portal site where the carriers enter that information or a user does and makes that entry into the TMS, it goes through this audit process. If it passes audit, it automatically goes to NAV for payment and it reverses the accrual. If it fails audit, it remains in TMS. And TMS then allows the user to manage those exceptions and enables um, you know, users to, to manage that and save them time. So uh, we do prevent duplicate invoicing. So if shippers are out there having issues with duplicate invoices, so we protect against that. So whether you have a single location that you're managing your freight from or multiple locations, we do have role center security. So if I'm responsible for warehouse eight, I will only see warehouse eight. Or if I have responsibility to see all warehouses, we can set up the role security to allow users to have unlimited access. So just moving to the right here, I'm going to click on our carrier tab. And carrier really is synonymous with transportation provider, whether it's a broker, an LTL carrier, a truckload carrier, intermodal carrier. 
ocean carriers. So we don't discriminate against the carrier world and transportation provider world, if you will. And so we treat them all the same and basically set up that information directly into the screen with the contact information, dispatch offices. And um, clicking on these tabs here, qualifications are very important. As I mentioned, we had alerts around uh, insurance. So we do track the carrier's insurance and prevent a user from applying a load or booking a load on a carrier that may have insurance that, that has been expired. So we have some uh, elements of, of risk management here in protecting you from booking loads with uh, expired insurance. If they're qualified, their MC number, the DOT number. Uh, down below here, we have some risk management parameters. And a lot of shippers will negotiate hundred or $100,000 of insurance coverage with their carriers. So what we can do is embed that figure here in this field. And what this will do for us is that if I have a shipment and the value of the goods exceed that of $100,000, it will flag an alert to the user and prevent the user from booking a load with that carrier on that single shipment. And then we have the exposure for all shipments for a given carrier across your network. And this, all, this is all tied into the SKU level value of the, those items on those orders. And so this could be ratcheted down. It could be maybe a negotiated $50,000 and so to, for, in, in, to offset better rates. So this can be turned on, turned off, but again, it minimizes your risk exposure and making sure that you're, you're in compliance with your carrier's insurance. Moving to the right here, we communicate with carriers, uh, again, a couple different ways. The standard traditional EDI capability of 204, low tender, the 990, 997, accept, reject notifications. You have the 214 status updates from pickup to transit and delivery confirmation. And then last but not least is a 210, which allows those invoices to come directly into the TMS. For the carriers that do not utilize EDI or have that capability, we do have a web portal system that carriers can go in and accept or reject loads they can provide status updates, delivery confirmation, and also a, uh, enter their freight invoice directly right on the portal site. We are moving to APIs, and so um, I just want to kind of point that out where we have uh, eight freight APIs, and a lot of those APIs will be inclusive of a uh, tender process, a tracking process, a proof of delivery, so we'll actually have a document and uh, that's something we're working on with now. We cover about 99% of the domestic LTL carriers out there with our APIs, and all that is seamless through using APIs. And so uh, we'll support carriers that do EDI, we'll support carriers that do APIs, and then ultimately we'll support the carriers that want to go through the web portal. Uh, fuel addendum is very important as uh, this is a fuel matrix. As a cost component to uh, your freight expense, obviously fuel is a big chunk of that. And so you can impose or instill uh, the carrier's fuel matrix directly into the TMS, or if you want to negotiate your own fuel matrix, you can load that directly into the TMS. We have a routine that goes out to the Department of Energy on a weekly basis, and it'll go out and pull back that week's fuel and bounce it off the matrix that you have set up in the TMS system. So when fuel is between $1.75 and $1.79, it'll apply the 3% fuel components to my total cost. Whether it's a percentage basis or per mile basis, we have the capability of tracking that by carrier and um, within the system as well. So again, backing into our expected costs, fuel is a big element of that, and providing that we have fuel loaded correctly, we should be pretty much spot on with our expected freight cost. Clicking on pro numbers. You know, back in the day, carriers would give you a, a book of stickers to assign uh, and slap onto a pallet. So no longer do we need to have that take place. Uh, the TMS system is capable of applying the check digit, check digit algorithm embedded into the TMS. So we do have these templates here for carriers that leverage the Mod 7, uh, the Mod 11, the Mod 10, there's a Mod 9. We also provide a way to customize. So if a carrier doesn't follow any one of these formats, we certainly have a way to take a block of numbers for that carrier and then have the system automatically calculate the start and the seed and in, in the warning uh, numbering scheme here for the carrier's pro number. So that pro number assignment will be automatically assigned. 
This tends to follow that transaction all the way through tender when I tender this to Old Dominion. That is obviously the ship ID that will be the invoice number that comes in from that EDI 210 invoice. So this transaction follows each order that it's applied to throughout the system. And so it's automatically generated by the TMS. We can send that to the WMS so that can be printed on labels or the TMS can print those labels as needed. So this is a little bit about the carrier side. And um, we do have a tariff management tool. So if I click on this tariff management uh, button here, I actually have it open already. Uh, within our portal system, this is where we reside all the tariff rates for each carrier. And you can see here it's by warehouse. So I have all these uh, tariffs and carriers out of this facility here called NGL Demo. If I go in and just select YRC, we're going to look at a, an LTL tariff here. And if I open up this tariff, you'll see now that we can manage your class exceptions. So if you've got class exceptions, it's important to back into your item card to make sure that NAV supports the items, uh, your item card and that information associated with those SKUs coming over to TMS so that we have the class. Otherwise, we can manage your class exceptions, your discounts that you may have with the carriers. And so you'll see here that uh, I have an 82.5% discount for the U.S. However, when I go to Florida, I have a different discount uh, element in, as well with, with Illinois. We do support interline, and we do have indicators. A lot of shippers want to know whether or not we're choosing an interline carrier versus a direct carrier, and the reason for that may be service issues. And so we do track the differential between an interline carrier and a direct carrier, minimum charge, minimum, minimum weight, and non-service points. So if I click on service here and expand service, you'll see now that we have a pretty comprehensive freight matrix that begins at the country level. So I can have country rates, or I can have state rates, we have city rates, or I can have three-digit or five-digit zip code ranges as it pertains to uh, the carrier's tariff, my class, my minimum value, my transit days. So we load all those transit days into TMS and allow us to track that transit uh, information. And then my weight breaks. You'll see this is a, a, an FAK class uh, weight break starting at zero, 500, 1,000. This is all soft programmable users can <clears throat> enter in whatever carrier's breaks are that they have for their contracts. We also support using the measure, whether it's pallets, cubes, or volume. We also have truckload tariffs, uh, whether it's a flat rate, a rate per mile, uh, distance rates. Um, we do support all of that. Clicking on fees, because fees are very important when you're talking with carriers. It's a way, another, it's kind of like the airline industry and your baggage fees, right? It's another way of uh, profitability. But you'll see here that we have an exhaustive list of various types of fees that we can load into the TMS system for each carrier tariff you have. And notice to the far right, we have what we call profile-specific fees. The TMS has uh, logic in it to understand and identify that if I go to a particular ship to location, and I have at that customer level profile a checkbox called liftgate service, the system is going to automatically look at those carriers that have the liftgate fee and apply this $45 liftgate charge automatically. So when I'm talking about freight accruals and the total carrier expected cost, I not only have my line haul with all my discounts, my fuel, I also now have, inclusive of that, my liftgate service fee. So I already know that that is part of my total freight expected cost coming in. No longer are you getting an additional bill here later down the road. And so all that cost component is pre-calculated for the shipper. You want to explain high density, HDM? Yeah, so HDM fees here are, are really now, say, going into Long Island. Carriers are going to charge a surcharge. And um, so the TMS has logic and understanding by destination zip codes, if you will, um, understanding those destination points and applying these H, the high-density metro fees. So we can insert those high-density metro fees uh, directly into the TMS. It'll be calculated when it goes to, when it has an order going to Long Island, it's going to earmark that as a, as a high-density metro fee and apply the $65. So it works very similar to the, uh, the liftgate service concept. And all this data can be imported using Excel. And so we leverage an Excel template that imports and exports this data quite nicely to allow users to manage uh, their carrier contracts and their rates. I also want to point out here that we do have revision control and effective from and to dates. And so we do 
store that information from a historical purposes so we can always reference back, but it's a nice feature to do some comparisons in terms of what you're doing with your freight and transportation spend. And depending, some shippers might have seasonal rates. And so we can insert a, a rate here from 9113 to 9116 and have a new tariff that starts at you know, 992. So uh, a lot of flexibility within the tariff system. Since I'm here, uh, I'd like to kind of go into the rate shopping tool. And so uh, we do have a rate shopping tool that is available to anybody that has access to the portal system. Uh, it's a simple entry of your origin location, and um, you enter in your destination. And the one thing about our rate shopping tool, it allows you to enter in you know, a lot of different information. If you have volume rates, I'm sorry, the volume, the cases, uh, the temperature type, if you have dual or mixed temperature. But really what our rate shopping tool will do is in a centralized repository here, we have all of your carrier rates in, in one screen. And it pulls back and ranks each carrier that you have, lowest to high, and ranks them here. So the users now have a, an indicator as to, do I want to go with the lowest cost carrier, but it has a five-day transit? Or do I want to expedite this? And it should actually be a one here, but this is demo data, so go with me here. But I have a transit pay of, of one day, and now I'll pay a, a premium to get it there in one day. So visually now, they have, whether it's an LTL, a priority shipment, a truckload, and our modal, all within a centralized location to pull back this information. Whether it's customer service, or logistics team having access, or the sales team having visibility, anybody can give and do rate shopping within the TMS system here. So the other thing, keeping in line with uh, Microsoft's mobility uh, for 2016 and further enhanced in 2017, you'll see that the portal itself is written in HTML5, which allows, with the proper um, authorization, username and passwords, uh, any user uh, to actually log in, uh, whether it's on a tablet, smartphone, or a desktop PC, and actually access this information um, through a wide area network connection. Um, go ahead, Chad. Very good. So, okay, so that's a little bit on the, the web portal. I'll talk a little bit about the track and trace, and I'll come back here. We do have a scheduling system that allows users to schedule dock appointments, and uh, I'll kind of come back into this. But <clears throat> just really wanted to shore up the carrier side of things here, of how we store carrier information, the rates. And, and last but not least, I just wanted to uh, go into what we call a lane, which is an origin destination pair. And you see I've got my origin here, Atlanta, going to Atlanta, the Canon Group. And um, we have a couple of different settings that users can apply. I have a default routing, so I can say I always want YRC on this particular customer card here. And so when an order comes in, it'll automatically apply the YRC. So it'll follow your business rules or apply the lowest cost carrier. So there's a couple different settings here that users can turn on. If I want to auto tender, all I do is checkbox this auto tender here. And what this will do is, as orders come in, it's automatically going to send that tender transaction out. No user intervention required. And it will go through that workflow of tender, the carriers accepted the load, and then ultimately continue that workflow process. So really, you can configure the TMS system to be hands-on as much as you'd like or hands-off. So it's really user-friendly in managing that capability. So this is our lane, and uh, it ties into the unique numbering scheme here, working with NAV, and NAV is always a source of truth in terms of identifying uh, the origin and the destination location here. So just to step back, what constitutes an order in TMS? I have my warehouse location, I've got my carrier that I'm going to sign, and I have my lane, which is my customer information, basically. So now I want to just sit back and kind of go into NAV and um, play the role of uh, the customer service. I'm going to not actually execute an order, but um, I'll walk us through uh, the various departments in our interaction with uh, NAV. You see that we've got a transportation department here, and depending on your role setup, you may have uh, access or uh, to the limited information within this screen here, whether it's a per pick worksheet or the purchase invoice worksheet. Uh, I'm going to come back into the purchase invoice worksheet here uh, once we complete the freight audit function, but 
if I go into the sales order and, um, you know, basically once that sales order is released, um, as everybody's aware of, you release that sales order and now that order will be sitting in the transportation management system to allow users to begin planning their day-to-day -day work. So in the TMS system, I have a couple different screens that users can apply their workload. And this is what we call our load status board. And I have some workflow here that users can filter their data that they want to review. So N is basically a new load. It needs to be assigned a carrier. Carrier assigned may not be the final carrier, but I'm still in planning mode. I can see all the, the orders that are in tender status, whether they're EDI tender or web tender, and then ultimately all the loads that have been accepted by the carrier. So users go in and apply this filter information. If they have responsibilities to, of managing all warehouses, they can see all warehouse or just the warehouse they're responsible. And this is a, a date range of all my orders that have a load date between 1111 and 11.13. So I'm looking at the sales order, 1116. It's ship, shipping to the canning group. And here are my uh, dates, uh, the load date and the required date in my order metrics. If I click on this icon, it takes me back to the carrier, the lane, and this takes me into the actual individual order. So I'm looking at this order, and it's a fairly basic order. I have it shipping from Atlanta, going to Atlanta. It's 555 pounds. I have my sales order. I have my requested date of when the customer would like to have this de delivered. I have the, the load date and the required date, and we have a must-leave by date and time. And you see that the must-leave by date and time is flagged in red because we have a service violation. It takes uh, three days to actually get there and meet this requirement. So we have some capabilities and, and notifications of alerting users if there's a transit time violation based on the carrier that they selected. If I click on the Details tab, it takes me into the items that, that are on this order. And you'll see now here that uh, we have a lot of different fields capable of managing item level information, the item number, size, brand, description, even cost center or lot number tracking. And so the beauty of having these, this information in the TMS system allows us to analyze our freight spend at the SKU level and do some more you know, analytics around our freight profitability at the SKU level. Food service industry uh, may have a cost center, whether it's retail or food, I'm sorry, yeah, food service, or some other mechanism in the distribution industry of tracking different freight components and your profitability. So, by default, the system automatically will allocate that freight cost by weight across each item on that, that order. And so going forward, it's important to build out your item card to make sure that we have all these buckets to you know, manage the proper rate calculation for those ter carrier tariffs, such as class. You know, going forward, carriers are going to impress upon you know, dimensional type of information, ties and highs coming over. Um, so we do support all that uh, directly within the TMS. You may have to build out your item card in, in NAV. So I have this order. Red LTL was selected. If I click on the revenue tab here, you'll see now here's my rate of $175. I've got fuel uh, percentage, so total carrier cost of 186.38. So if I wanted to change a carrier here uh, and look at different options of carriers, I've got a couple different solutions. I can select a spot rate, so if I want to negotiate, whether it's a truckload or an LTL, a spot rate, I can apply a spot rate. If I wanted to see other carriers that service this, this origin destination pair, I can go in and it'll give me a drop-down list based on the tariffs that we have in the system and show transit times, whether it's an LTL or a truckload. So giving you that complete picture based on transit and service issues that you may come up with. And assign the dispatch office and make your proper carrier selection. So visually you have now the right tools to make the, the good decisions of, of the right carrier in terms of cost and service. If I wanted to tender this load, again, all I have to do is go to the tender tab here and just click that tender process. You'll see it changed the workflow from P to PC. Also to your left, you notice that it assigned the carrier assigned pro number, 12950. That's the magic ship ID number or the invoice number that the carrier is going to link to in terms of tracking this transaction throughout the process. Once the carrier accepts the load, I'll go ahead and accept this on behalf of the carrier because I don't have it tied to any EDI or the web portal at this time. 
we do have a confirmation date and time stamp, and again, we have the PRO number. What happens now, we release this to the warehouse. So depending on the warehouse configuration, we can release this data so that the, the carrier, the PRO number information, if we're doing truckloads and multi-stops, we release the multi-stop information to the warehouse, and we actually reverse the stop sequence so that the users can pick and stage the product to load the truck correctly. So we have some control there. So really, this is just a simple solution of managing your LTL shipments. Uh, truckload is very similar in nature. I have an order for a truckload. I can assign my carrier. Uh, some shippers may have more complex freight needs, and I'd like to take us into what we call our load planning screen. And so um, this is typically designed for the filters are the same way. I have my warehouse location, my filter dates, my load dates, and I'm looking at information here of, of orders coming into the system that are in planning mode. I've got an order going to California for 18,000 pounds, New Jersey 35, and California 14, and another truckload here at 30,000 pounds. And so if I just check on this box, and I have some field choosers here, so I can display different pieces of information to customize and configure my screen here. But I have two orders going to California, and if I wanted to build a multi-stop truckload, all I need to do is just grab this order using drag-and-drop capabilities and create now my multi-stop truckload. You'll see here I have a stop number one, stop number two. If I wanted to make this one, I just quickly drag this up at the top here, and um, if I wanted to assign a carrier, I just go up to my select carrier button, and not only will it assign the, the carrier and give you that visibility to make that determination, it looks at all cost components, whether it's a line haul, the rate per mile, the flat rate, the stop charges. Obviously, carriers have stop charges associated with a multi-stop shipment uh, fuel, so we do have the capabilities of controlling and tracking all of your, your freight expenditures. And if I just open up this revenue tab here, you'll see that the cost has been allocated. I've got my fuel, and we break out these accessorial charges here. So I have a stop fee, two of $100 for a total carrier cost of 436 for this portion of the shipment. You remember that this is a multi-stop order. This total freight cost is allocated by weight. So I can then go in and complete the process of tendering the load just by going in and tendering the load. So just to recap a little bit here, we did a standard LTL shipment. A truckload shipment can follow the same process as a LTL shipment. And then I have my multi-stop loads here. Everything can be done within this screen, so users can access various screens to do their work. I can tender here, I can do my LTLs, I can do my multi-stops. We do also support multi-mode. So if you have a situation where you have a truck ocean vessel and a truck, we do support multi-modes. We do also support multi-picks. So if you pick up at multiple locations and deliver at multiple locations, depending on the complexity of your shipping requirements, we do support all those elements. Now I'd like to um, take us into the track and trace system, which will allow us to give visibility to customer service. So I tendered this load to the carrier. And um, if I was looking at, uh, let's just go into this transaction here, and I'm customer service and I want to check the status of an order. If I click on the link here and or enter in my information, I see it's shipping out of this warehouse going to this destination. I have a delivery confirmation of 1111. And any breadcrumb history, whether it's the EDI 214 updating this information or the carrier updating this information via the web portal, all that is controlled and stored within this portal system here. I now have a central repository to allow shippers the ease of use of going to one site to track all things tra transportation, whether it's customer service, the warehouse, or the field guys, the field people, the sales and marketing may want to have access to track the status of their orders. If I wanted to schedule appointments in my docs, I have a dock management solution here by warehouse. I look at the orders that have a, a dock appointment or a dock date, a load date of, of today, the 11th. I have some information here showing the order date, the load date, some item information if I wanted to see this. All I do is click Save. And now I have my appointment on my calendar, right? 
Well, if I do a right click, start checking, we have some visual cues here that help the user identify where we are, where we are in the process. This guy is checked in. If I do a right click, we, we track the start load, unload, the finish load, unload, whether it's inbound or outbound, and ultimately the checkout. And so all this is tracked within the TMS system and we can report against our efficiencies at the dock level, whether it's an inbound or an outbound shipment. So I have an order that ultimately delivered, right? And so the next step of the process is getting that freight invoice. <clears throat> and so the freight invoice can come in a couple different ways. I have a manual entry where I can go in and just manually enter that freight bill, and I do a compare and a match process. So I look for, does I, do I have a match with this freight invoice? Yes, okay, great. Now it goes to the audit function. So whether that EDI 210 comes in electronically or the carrier enters that freight bill through the portal, it will automatically go through the audit function here. So I have this order sitting in the audit screen. If I run audit, if it falls off the screen, it passes audit. Now electronically, those 210s will automatically flow in here and go through the audit. You manage those on an exception basis, but if it, pass, if it passes audit, it'll automatically go to NAV in real time, as will the freight invoices that are entered on the portal site. So now I'm going to turn my uh, head over to um, the accounting person and go into NAV, and I want to generate my purchase invoice worksheet here. So that sales order that I just was working with, the freight bill that came in here, freight bill, um, this number here, and it was 186.38. I'm going to go ahead and process this freight bill and then get my document, and I'm going to post this. Okay, and I'm going to refresh my screen, and now I have my invoice number, okay? So now let's go ahead and pay this. So as the accounting person, they go in and they want to pay this invoice for this particular carrier. So we look at uh, our account number, and we just go through these fields here. It's an invoice I want to pay. I want to apply it to this document, and uh, I'm just going to do a computer check here. I'm going to print this to screen just to kind of continue this execution. I'm going to generate a check here. Say yes. So now I'm going to go ahead and post this. And the lines were updated successfully. So if I click OK and then go back into the purchase invoice worksheet, you'll see now here that I have uh, a confirmation that it's been paid, the check number, and the invoice number. So if I take us back to the sales order 1114 into the TMS system here, I have a confirmation, my freight bill number, the bill cost, here's the date that it was paid, and the check number. So in essence, it closes that entire loop of my orders come in, traffic planners plan their orders, they assign carriers, the freight bills come in, it's audited, it's in NAV for payment, and then we have the freight bill here displaying for the users to identify and have those communications with the carriers if they're checking payment um, uh, confirmation with the carriers. And, and these transactions actually happen in real time because we utilize exclusively web services uh, and event triggers and they have to communicate along with extensions. So I'm just going to step back to our presentation here and just continue on. I uh, just wanted to kind of wrap up here a little bit with the benefits of Dynamics TMS. And really, you know, visibility is the key of, of managing any one supply chain of inbound, outbound shipments, a lot of transactions flowing through any one uh, company's uh, business. And so having that access to the visibility, the visibility of, of managing those orders um, in TMS really helps, you know, manage your supply chain and, and the opportunity of reducing your, your costs. You have uh, the capabilities 
of making better decisions, analyzing carrier costs and comparing costs for service versus mode, and allows you to instill core carrier strategy programs and you know have an 80-20 principle where 80% of your asset-based carriers and the 20% are covered by brokers. And so a lot of that can be controlled and managed within the TMS system. Improve your planning. Now, like I said, mode allocation, depending on your shipping requirements, you may just do LTL, or you may have a lot of opportunity to reduce uh, freight expense and build multi-stop truckloads and optimize routing and minimize miles and obviously maximize capacity. Uh, monitoring and tracking costs is real key to any successful supply chain. You want to be proactive versus reactive. You want to have the data and the information to make good decisions and then in, and instill those decisions and uh, instill strategy in leveraging not only a, a tactical solution, an execution so solution like dynamic TMS, but allows you to apply strategic initiatives within your program. You know, do more with less. Improve the efficiencies, the operating efficiencies of not having the push around paper, but all those orders come directly into the TMS system, allow users to customize or create uh, their screens based on the information that they want to work with, allows you to do more time in managing. You want to manage the, the uh, exceptions, if you will, and um, typically shippers have seen anywhere between 5% to 30% opportunity in reducing their overall freight exposure. That comes in various different ways. It could be pure carrier cost and just making the right carrier decisions, or it could be a mix of mode, whether it's intermodal versus truckload. And so there's a lot of opportunities based on your shipping needs here that um, may lend itself to anywhere between 5 and 30 percent. Obviously, overhead. Um, you may have a lot of people touching freight bills. You may have an opportunity to reduce that. And not only that, it minimizes your risk. Uh, a lot of government regulations that are taking place today, uh, you know, you've got to make sure that you're watching what's going on with your risk management. So with that, I'll conclude the presentation and turn us over back back to Adam, and uh, we'll do a question and answer session, see if we have any questions. Awesome. Thanks, John. Uh, looks like we do have a bunch of questions in here. Um, first one, someone's asking uh, that they use Lanham eShip, and they're curious to know if uh, Dynamics TMS would replace uh, their Lanham eShip. Yeah, so that's a great question. And so, as I said in the presentation, uh, we pick up where a lot of these systems leave off. And, and Lanham and some other solutions out there are really, really good at what they do in terms of parcel and some LTL. But um, we wouldn't necessarily be a replacement, I would say, for uh, Lanham or any other parcel solution today. Uh, I would say we're, we'd be more or less a complement uh, to that solution. Again, everybody's Every, every shipper has got a different requirement. Um, if you're heavy parcel, then I would say no. If you're light on the parcel and you're more on the LTL truckload multi-mode concept, then we would be a complementary solution to that. Okay. Great. Thanks, John. Um, we do have a bunch more questions coming in. Uh, I actually just want to call attention to something before we get into more questions. If you don't feel like asking a question during the session, but you want to follow up with John afterwards, um, there's actually a form that you should see in the Media Viewer tab where you can just fill out your name and your email and just choose a day where you'd like to chat with John. Um, pretty easy form to fill out. So if you don't feel like asking questions and you want to do that, um, that's a, a great alternative. Um, anyways, all right, so let's get back to the questions. Um, so someone is asking if carriers can submit invoices via EDI. Yes, exactly. So we do have a transportation EDI module, right? And so um, that, that EDI document is called a 210. So carriers can send their EDI 210s to the TMS system, have it go through the audit function. Um, if carriers do not have EDI, and a lot of truckload carriers don't participate in EDI, a lot of the LTL dry carriers do EDI, but the truckload guys, the temperature controlled guys typically do not do EDI, and that's where we have the web portal solution to allow carriers to interact through the web portal simulating EDI, if you will. So it eliminates the overhead of users entering in freight invoices manually and allows the portal to do the work for you. So a follow-up to that answer is that a lot of customers we've seen actually utilize outside third-party auditing companies 
And the level of precision and granularity that we put into this Dynamics TMS allows you to actually uh, generate an expected cost, costing out the load. Uh, and then whether it's through web, the web portal or through EDI 210, uh, transactions um, actually audit, as you saw, the freight bill internally. And uh, we went through a, some manual processes here, but this auditing feature and function is, is fairly automated. Um, and so as a matter of fact, what, what happens when you get a ship confirmation from NAV, uh, a transaction uh, is posted in summary, uh, which is a freight accrual transaction in a GL. Uh, and then as the freight bill comes in, whether again, whether through the web uh, or through EDI or through actually keyed in uh, the old manual method, um, it reverses the accrual if it passes on and posts in detail to the general ledger and creates the payable as you saw in NAV. All this process is, is, is done uh, transparently in, in background. So, um, you know, there's another feature there that if you do use a third party, outside third party for auditing, uh, you know, you could replace it with, an, with the internal uh, process very easily. Great, thank you. Um, another question here, uh, if we do not use NAV warehousing capabilities, would the process still work uh, in regards to seeing that the load shipped via our other system that handles that functionality? I'm not certain what you mean by other system, but essentially if you don't have a warehousing component, um, yeah, all things transportation will still be shown as I displayed today and viewable within the portal system and within the TMS. And that interaction between NAV and TMS, all that data is there. You're just not using the warehouse component. So, yes. see if we have any more questions. Um, someone's actually asking if, uh, they're, they're asking if NAV supports calculating Canadian taxes for loads shipping inside of Canada. Yeah, great, great question. Eric, did you want to have, handle that? Yeah, we actually have a customer in Canada uh, right now, and, and that's absolutely right that uh, you have to uh, generate uh, actually taxes, uh, their tax on, on freight. So we actually have an algorithm uh, and a workflow within our TMS system that actually calculates the provincial taxes uh, for the, the Canada. Uh, it does the allocation based on the way the Canadian government wants it. Uh, I believe you could file at the end of the year uh, with the Canadian government for a refund, and I guess I don't know if you have to be a certain size company organization to be able to do that, uh, but but certainly the documentation to do that is within the TMS. Yeah, you have GST, PST, HST yeah. taxes, and, and all that can be managed. Yeah, all those accessorial fees are part of the system. Adam, while you may comb through some additional questions, I just wanted everybody to know that uh, Dynamics TMS does support uh, various versions uh, of NAV. Uh, we can go back as far as 09, but there might be a little bit more effort because uh, I don't know how many people are actually working, looking to do more work in, in 09, but they want to certainly upgrade. And so we can drop this in with 2013, 2015, 2016, and 2017. Uh, because of our, our technology and the way we've worked with NAV using design patterns and extensions, it allows for that easy connectivity, and I can tell you this, that TMS will not be your hurdle when it comes time to upgrade from version to version. Yeah, in terms of ROI, uh, we have folks that uh, are planning an upgrade, but it might be 8, 9, 10, 12 months, 18 months away, uh, but they want to get the ROI uh, that the system does offer. So the strategy is we could put in an in-place upgrade with whether you got, let's say, 2013 R2. Uh, right now you're planning an upgrade to 2017 sometime in fiscal 2018. Uh, that's not a problem. We can put it in uh, the way you have uh, with your existing system, the way it's configured right now, and then we just, uh, uh, you know, when, when 2017 comes in and when you're ready to implement that, we just, uh, unplug it from 2013 and plug it into 2017. So 
someone's asking if the system is capable of using a ranked uh, routing guide. Yeah, great question. So routing guides, really a loaded question, but the way we see routing guides in, in dynamic TMS is as follows. I have a routing guide. There's two concepts, and I'll, I'll take this approach first. I can create a route, call it Route 100, and within that Route 100, I can assign my equipment types based on capacities, cases, weight, pallets, queues. I can then assign an, a customer to a route. When an order comes in, it's going to follow that business rule and apply those customers to Route 100 and start building up that truck, okay? Once it, reach, it reaches capacity, it'll start throwing orders onto another truck. So that's one element of a routing guide. Perhaps, perhaps you may have a different methodology around routing guides in terms of what you, 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 you're saying, how, how it works. Well, we have a preference. Yeah. And so we also have a feature that allows users to go in and say, by preference for this customer, I want to use Old Dominion for anything under 5,000 pounds or under 10,000 pounds. And he's my preferred carrier, but I have a secondary carrier that's my maybe 10,000 pounds to 20,000 pounds. So we do have that type of routing guide connectivity or concept of allowing users to configure the way they want to manage their business. Okay, basically, we call that a customer-directed routing guide where the customer says, hey, it's really a CPU, but I want you to use the following routing. If it's an LTL, I want you to use this carrier uh, going to this facility. Uh, if it's a truckload, uh, based on whatever metrics you assign as a truckload, I want you to use this carrier going to this facility uh, here. So the answer is yes to both. Um, and there's probably some configurations in between there as well. So, yeah, definitely uh, that's something that we, we handle very nicely. John, another question. Um, what's the difference between Dynamics TMS and other solutions in the Microsoft space? Uh, excellent. Um, like I said, you know, there's a lot of solutions. Um, you know, we try to to stick with what we do in terms of picking up where some of those other solutions leave off. You know, we spoke about LANM and other parcel solutions. And so we provide our level of value is in and above the parcel side, where if you have heavy LTL, truck load combination, multi-mode, or uh, international type of shipping. And so that's where we differentiate ourselves. But I think also, too, our value proposition in terms of the integration and protecting your ERP investment of allowing you to go from version to version to version and not be the critical hurdle, if you will, in terms of uh, your update process, upgrade process. Yeah, Adam, um, what we have found in several situations is um, every integration is not cut out the same. Uh, so what is one person's integration is somebody else's uh, FTP file that uh, comes over through some sort of batch file transfer. Um, it's not really truly uh, integrated down to the minutia. Um, sometimes it's just the front end from customer service and then the back end uh, going into accounting uh, kind of uh, is out there uh, incomplete. A lot of times these budgets for to do these integrations um, run out of money. Uh, or they spend too much money, they're over budget, and it really doesn't do the job uh, because the people that are doing the integration don't know much about transportation uh, or they don't know that much about NAV. Um, so having a very tight integration, as John mentioned, so you don't have to worry about cumulative updates that come down from Microsoft, breaking uh, your production system. Uh, or God forbid you go from 2013 to 2017, now all of a sudden you got huge uh, expenses to try to take all your add-ons, right, uh, and actually rewrite them, what we call rewriting for 2017. Uh, so uh, that, that's what we have found. So what, the ability to move up and down and actually uh, add enhancements to the system uh, without breaking your production system is a huge advantage that we have. Uh, and as NAV scales up uh, in terms of the capabilities, uh, there are more and more NAV users and companies using NAV that want 
what we call higher level type transportation management. It's not only about parcel anymore. Uh, you know, it's multi-mode, international shipments, uh, and, and, you know, that, that kind of direction that we're seeing. Just seeing if any more questions come in. Yeah, we kind of ran over time here, so uh, we're, we're available. <laughs> <clears throat> sure. Give people a few more seconds to collect their thoughts. And as I do that, I just wanted to share that um, some of our go-forward strategy, and, and some of you may have stopped in to see us during the NAVUG. Um, you know, we are uh, working with uh, a project right now uh, leveraging APIs. Um, we talked and showed you a little bit about our tariff system and, and EDI concept. But, um, you know, that's going to go away in terms of the industry as it relates to freight and transportation. APIs and real-time communication is where the direction of transportation is going. We're leveraging that and we're on board with that. As I mentioned earlier, we have an API that will basically capture 99% of the LTL, domestic LTL market through a single API. What does that mean? Through a single API, I can do a rate shop, I can do carrier selection, I can do tendering, I can also do delivery confirmation, and a proof of delivery document, an actual document. That doesn't happen with with EDI. And so that's the direction we're moving. That's what's going to happen in the transportation industry. And so now, you know, we're moving with the latest and greatest and in, in working with a real-time supply chain. And truckload carriers will be slow to go to that world, but I think the LTL is starting that. And other modes of transportation are, are latching on. So Yeah, there's a real disruption going on, technology disruption and, um, you know, I, I hate to say it, I think we're at the bleeding or cutting edge of that uh, because our next release is going to support over 125 different LTL carriers instantly available to whoever uses TMS with your own contracts in place. So uh, transportation EDI is going to be dead in a year or two, the way we know it now. It's kind of like the Uber of uh, electronic communication. Well, I like to say, I like to use the the picture of a cassette tape versus Pandora. Yeah. <laughs> any other questions? No, it doesn't look like any other questions uh, are coming in. So why don't we end there? Um, John and Ari, I'd like to really thank you guys a lot for uh, taking the time to present today. That was a really great um, session. I, I enjoyed thank it. Thank everybody yeah. who attended. Yeah, yeah, thank you, everybody. Um, and just as a reminder, we recorded the session, uh, so we'll send you a link uh, once it's on demand, uh, which should probably in the next, be in the next couple of days, but we'll keep you updated. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thank you.